thousand years ago the choir from heaven came to this world and announced glory to God in the highest on earth peace and goodwill to all men today I stand here to say to our sole administrator on this his first beginning Hundred day of hundred days in office. Glory to God in the highest. Everybody say that with me. Glory to God in the highest. On earth peace. On earth peace. And goodwill, and goodwill. To, all to all men and women. Point hand to him here, say, beginning with you. Beginning with you. Amen. Remain standing for a few minutes before you sit down. I'm used to standing for Jesus. I believe that there's no other power under the sun to stand for. I thank God for all in authority globally and worldwide. But there's only one name where you mention demons tremble. And that name is no other name. But it's the name above all other names. At the name of Jesus, every knee bow. And every tongue confess his Lord indeed. On behalf of we members of Edo State University. I say we members. We students and faculty. I hope you are hearing me, we. We want to congratulate our sole administrator, Professor Mike Isoku. <laughs> Uncle Mike. Brother Mike. I said, Brother Mike. I think brother is better than brother. This one doesn't bother you, he brothers you. And I want to say to all students of every belief and every denomination, Jesus said in the day he entered the house of Zacchaeus, this day is salvation come to this house. If you look upstairs, under one roof that covered the whole universe, called sky. The weather is bright in your favor. God is looking down on your behalf. Favoring you with goodness and mercy. I want on behalf of the team that came with me. Congratulate you sir. For being appointed. By military government. By Muslim. Head of government in the Edo state. To stir the affairs. Of this university. Until further notice. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I think God can look down from heaven today and say, that's my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Since I do not have the gift of flattery, I think I'm qualified to say at this time in history, our nation is blessed. Our state is blessed. Our people are blessed. And this university is blessed with the life of Professor Michael Isoku. 
Let me hear you say big hallelujah. Just two more minutes you'll be asked to sit down. Edo State University is a young university. But the fame of it is more than the age of it. And I am grateful to God that though you are young in age, you are old in fame. We want not only to immortalize the great name you born and end yourself legally, academically, and training from a former obscured village now popularized by the intelligence of our intellectuals to bring to a world map one of the best universities in the continent of Africa. And by the grace of Almighty God, that name shall not be dented with any stain. That's why we are here to start a crusade operation, clean the campus. And it's to the glory of God that I announce to you that what we are starting here today shall go around the entire nation to help our youths to be free from the bondage of few evil-minded elements whom the enemy would have wanted to beguile and beguile and send to Hades and hell. He has failed in his bead and he will not succeed after today. Amen. Kindly take your seat if you can find any. Since this is not the night of oratory or poetry or grammar grammatizing, I will therefore simply cancel you on what can give you great future. How many of you would like to have a great future? Everyone here, do you like to have a great future? Do you know that to have a great future, you must have a good beginning? Because if you have no good beginning, you can never be a great future leader. As so administrator, I want to not only congratulate you that you have already served creditably 100 days in office, but it was a pride and delight in my heart to hear that even all God's salary have been paid. If you still have vacancy in this school, I'd like to apply. <laughs> well, I'm already won by implication and association. And I asked one of our senior ministers in the country just now, I said to mark my visit to Ekboma, something must be left in this campus today. And I'm glad, therefore, to say to you, as well, Administrator, tomorrow morning, Reverend Matthew Okwebo will send a check of 100000 to this school. Whatever you want to send it for, you can spend it for it. Can I hear you say hallelujah? Thank you very much, Reverend Matthew Okwebo, and congratulations to you as well, Administrator. Convey to our governor, group captain, Adamu Yang, the joy of our students and staff, that in his time, and it's up to a year now, they have not been paying on time, almost one year, salary was not coming on time. Almost two years. Do you know that the last time you were not paid on time is the last time you were not paid on time? I hope you understand that English. I said the last time they were not paid on time is the last time they were not paid on time. Hereafter, before the need arises, the means will be there. How many can say amen to that? I'm grateful to God. And I want to congratulate all the senior members of staff 
otherwise known as special advisor, or in another word, deputy vice chancellors of every department, especially my church member who attends church in a mosque every Friday. <laughs> but today he'll be attending church on Sunday instead of on Friday. <laughs> How many of you would like to have a brother like that in? All right. So beginning from next week, he will be speaking in every group of every chap chapel here. Did you hear me? Let him preach from Quran, chapter 53, where Muhammad said, the man who knows the way have bid you come, why should you delay? <laughs> Let me hear you say hallelujah. I don't think after today he will miss the way. I'm glad he's a forthright man. And God placed him here to be a great instrument for this university. Our mission here, myself, as senior professors and heads of our university that have come with me, are here for just one mission. To eradicate and exterminate forever the past that once reared their head here. And never to germinate again because the root is destroyed. The power of darkness in a Do State University. I am grateful to God that we left home with one assurance from God. Every tree that God didn't plant shall be uprooted. And I'm grateful that this campus is the first. We are starting this mission light for every student in all our university. 25 years ago, I went around the then few universities in this country, out of which our sole administrator today became a Christian. Now he's not only a Christian, but a pastor. Not only a pastor, a brother in the Lord. Can I hear you say hallelujah? hallelujah? I'm grateful that God does not negotiate with man. He designs his life and give him a will. Every time in the Bible you hear the word of God say, I said before you life and death. How sorrowful and sad I was this afternoon when I rushed from the third service I went to preach today. And I heard the terrible news of the unexpected and untimely, unwarranted and unneeded death of Princess Diana. She died 12 midnight last night. Princess Diana is gone. She's not sick, she's dead. At 6 p.m. this evening, her body will be flown from Paris to London. She's made money, she's made name, she's made fame. But she lost her life. And how did she die? Went to Paris to perish. In an attempt to add to her fame, she brought shame. She's not hungry. She's a multi-millionaire. Her inheritance will not be finished by her children's children. The few years she's lived. But how I wish she's not dead. How I wish she was sick and in coma. To come back to see the uselessness of pursuing life meaninglessly. To some of you that are here this evening... 
This may be the only opportunity you have in life to choose between life and death. If somebody told Princess Diana this time yesterday, you'll be dead this time tomorrow. She said, don't be silly. Security men will arrest the man. If it was a prophet that says so, he will lose his ministry. But she's gone and gone forever. The boyfriend she followed to France, they died in a tunnel. I don't know what you want to be in the future. But no one has made such a quick, speedy fame in our generation within 16 years of her marriage from an obscured, unpaid, undone, and uncooked teaching. She was a kindergarten teacher. Destiny had it that the most famous palace on earth hosts her in marriage. She married a wrong man. And her destiny was affected with affliction. Some of you are here in this school today. In your elementary stage of life. But you might just be the last hope and the first opportunity of your family. Like I said to them in Lagos yesterday, I'm an improvement on my father. You may be the first light to dawn to your family. So if you quench it, you ruin a generation. You better listen to me. If you are the only hope of your father and mother, educationally, or you are the first seed they counted on that through you, all the next people to come out of your family will become someone. And you cut that tree short. Or cut that life short. Or ruin that life. By any means, through any means, through any reason, for any reason. You have not only done yourself harm. You wrecked those who would have become someone through you. And how do we know? If you are an egg, how many chicks, cocks, and chickens your life would have produced? In an egg, it's more than one hen. Because when the egg is hashed and produce a chicken, either by cock or hen, more life will come through that life. You might just be an egg within you. Many lives have hope for tomorrow. That's why I've come to say to you, what do you want to be? And what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to become for your generation? I give you an example. The president of the whole world now it's Mr. Bill Clinton. At the age of eight, he told the mother, I'm going to be president one day. At the age of 44. Actually, at the age of 45, almost 46. He contested the election that no one gave him hope. His personal prophecy for himself, I will be president of America, came to pass. Not because he's the best man in America, but he determined not to be the worst. You better listen to me carefully. Today, every young politician is using him as yardstick of success. The whole president's Beginning with Mr. Yeltsin of Russia, Chirac of France, Herman Kohl of Germany, Tony Blair of England, Charles Taylor of Liberia, 
all want to be like Bill Clinton. Only as you relate and associate with what is good, that good intention become good action. Would you like to be named the most hooligan of your generation? Or will you want to be labeled a criminal from a Doe State University? The good news is this. When you ruin your life, you ruin another generation. And when you, when you save your life, the good news is that you save more people. The bad news is that when you waste your life, you are not only a loss to your father and mother, a loss to the city or village you came from, a loss to your state, a loss to your country, but the time you were born, you are also a loss to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So calculate from your village to your town, and Bruce Ali came from Emado, Epoma. His statue is now erected in the heart of town. This university is out of his benevolence. He read to the highest height of being made a professor in the university. That was not enough for him. He forgot that he was an interior man from inferior. He sailed through thick and thin. Today, whether you believe it or not, the foundation that Ali laid is what this man is building on. And the generation yet unborn will remember that Chief Professor Ambrose Ali lived. By one singular, unforgettable desire to open this university. He may die or he's dead, but his name is alive forevermore. And in the archives of successful men, Ambrose Ali will always be remembered. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Now just think for a while. Think within your scope of little knowledge you have now as a student. Or if you are a professor here, if you are a professor in this school, it's the end of learning. When you read and read and you have first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, and at the end, you are prophetically made a professor. That's the end of academic height. If they call you professor, professor, it's still one professor. And if you are a core professor and you can prophesy, then you have hope for extra future. Can I hear you say hallelujah? <laughs> but no decent man want to be named with evil-minded people. Whether it's in political arena, military arena. I'll give you an example. During the last election, a very, 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 very neat, handsome colonel, retired in the army, came to appeal to me to give him a letter to take to Abuja to be allowed to contest as chairman of his local government. I wrote to the powers that be, and I got a phone call. Even though he ended his career as an army officer, he wrecked his career. We do not want to offend you, your grace. But that man stole. And he was expelled from the army. It is because we do not, in our military form, expose everything. That's why he's called retired. Otherwise, he's actually fired. 
And they say he can never hold any political position in Nigeria because his career is dented. He carried a gun and carried a badge and never carried character. He rose to the heart of a colonel. But his manner was worse than a recruit. To be opportuned, to be admitted in a Do State University is a privilege. The scenery and the atmosphere of study here deprive you from the waywardness of city Romans. And I think you should take advantage of what God has done for you. When I was thinking of what to say to you here, from the Bible, which I was soon going to, the Holy Spirit moved in my heart to say to you, all of you, look around geographically, historically, politically, militarily, medically, legally, all aspects of life, of reign, whether there's any good man that's a member of a court. Not one. Not one. Above Bini is not. Adamu Yang is not. Traditionally, Oba is a monarch. Militarily, Baba Adamu Yang is a governor. Abacha is head of state, whether you like him or not. He's already there. None of these three people mentioned so far believe in occultism. Coming to decency in nearer home to you, I'm here tonight. No prime minister ever raised in this continent, no president born in this continent has traveled half of my lifespan. And I'm a condemner of occultism. If by belief I don't need it, by power the head of state don't need it, President Clinton doesn't need it. Why would you like to join what we wreck you before you start? It's a very small question. Find out whether your colleague in courts can boldly come out and contest for any good thing, even at the school here. Once you are known to be a member of secret court, your life ruins in secrecy. You cannot contest to become president of the school union. Except only here. Do they admit them here? Do you accept a member of court to be your leader in this school? You cannot contest as a governor of a do state. You can't run for the position of a minister in the cabinet. You cannot become president of Nigeria because your foundation has stain. That's why I've come to say, take the stain away by abstinence. Abstain from stain. And you have your future built on the word of God. Jesus said in John chapter 14, one scripture I've loved as a child. John chapter 14. And the good news is that I didn't come to condemn your former choice, but to give you a new choice. If you were once a member of the court, if you were once a member of secret society, either by inheritance or by interest, there's something better than what you are looking for. In John chapter 14, Jesus admonished his hearer with these words. Number one in verse one. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. In my father.